What is up, Harvesters? Welcome back to the returning viewers. And if you're brand new here, welcome to Hobby Harvest. My name is Ken. So today I want to talk to you guys about what makes a good food plot seed mix. And I am going to tell you my top four types of food plots. And I'm even going to mention a fifth one just because it is worth mentioning at the end of this video while we're talking about the context of different types of food plots. So when we're talking about this, I want to first mention what makes a bad mix. So you hear a lot of us on YouTube here talk about those bags of seed at the big box stores with the picture of the big buck on the front of them. Well, what makes those seed mixes bad? And they're not all bad. Those companies have gotten a lot better probably from us beating them up on YouTube here. But what makes those seed mixes bad is so you want to take that package, flip it over, and look at what seed is actually in that mix. If you see brassicas and cereal grains mixed together in the same mix, run for the hills, put it back on the shelf, hope that your neighbor is buying that and putting it in. And the reason being is those things need to be planted at different times during the planting season. Those brassicas need to go in first and grow up to be about six to eight inches tall before or you would add that cereal grain into them if you even added it into them at all anyway. So by having it in the same mix, planting at the same time, you're just setting yourself up for failure. That cereal grain is going to pop up, take up space, not let those brassicas get going. And that's not what you want in your food plot. So let's get into my four favorite types of food plots. And then I will, of course, mention that fifth one at the end because it's worth talking about. So number one on my list, my favorite type of food plot are cereal grain fruit food plots. And the reason being is they are foolproof. If you are a first time food plotter, you've never put a food plot in before, or even if you are just putting a new food plot in and it's never had anything planted in it before, especially if you're just opening up an area of the woods, this isn't like an old farm field or something, I highly recommend going with a 100% cereal grain food plot in that area. First of all, super foolproof. You can't mess it up. Cereal grains will grow in a gravel driveway. I've seen them grow in the bed of a truck. They will grow literally anywhere. They just need to get wet and they will grow. The other thing that they do is they are great at building your soil. So they are really good at putting organic material into your soil. So again, if this is a first year food plot, a really good way to get started with some good soil is to start with a cereal grain. Most of the time we're gonna recommend winter rye, especially in those farther north areas. We're talking zone five on up here. If you're further south, you can use winter rye as well, but you can use any of those other cereal grains as well. And most of them are going to end up being cheaper for you. So if you're doing this on a budget, you might want to look at putting something like oats or whatever in if it's cheaper than what your winter rye is going to set you back. So the other benefit of doing this is the cereal grain food plots are very browse tolerant. So if you are putting in a food plot like I do, I have several food plots in zone four in northwestern Wisconsin, I put in winter rye food plots exclusively up there now. I've tried a bunch of other things. They just get browsed down because I have a ton of browse pressure. This cereal grain really does hold up to that browse pressure so much better than planting the other things. So I don't have anything in the area. I have just big woods as far as the eye can see in every direction. I don't have any egg fields nearby to take some of that food pressure off of these plots. The deer eat every meal of the day off of these food plots unless they find some acorns or something off in the woods. They pound these food plots and I need these to stand up against that browse pressure. That's why I plant exclusively winter rye up there so that it can stand up to that. So, all right, let's get into my second favorite type of food plot, and that is, of course, brassica food plots. So, the reason why I love brassicas, like winter rye, they will stay viable into the colder months of the year. So, again, Zone 5 on North Zone 5 makes up about the southern part of Wisconsin on North up into the Great Lakes snow belt. You're going to get up into Zone 4 and Zone 3 up there. This is a type of food plot that will stand up to the cold temperatures. Now, it will not stand up to high browse pressure, so that's an issue we do need to fight when we are planting brassicas. But, like I said earlier, if you are getting a lot of browse pressure on your brassicas, once those brassicas are about 6 to 8 inches tall, you can throw in winter rye then to give, give some additional tonnage in with them, hopefully take some of that browse pressure off of those brassicas, 
and then let everything just grow up throughout the end of the, the growing season into your hunting season. Now, when you are planting brassicas, I seed them at seven pounds per acre, and that is an important number. You do not want to overseed brassicas. They need a lot of room to really grow and take up space as they get bigger. So be careful with adding that cereal grain into them as well. You don't want that cereal grain to take up too much room unless you really do have a browse pressure issue. I try to avoid putting that cereal grain in there unless I have to, but again seven pounds per acre and the reason for this is like even in my garden i have kohlrabi in my garden which is a brassica i spaced them 12 inches apart which is about as far apart as you would want to space something like that in your garden and i still had the issue of some of the plants not forming bulbs because they were planted too tight to each other and all they did was just build leaves out which is great for a food plot because the deer are going to be eating the leaves not the bulbs so much anyway but it just shows that those brassicas really need that space so that they can grow into the best version of themselves. So don't overdo that seeding rate with those brassicas. Try to avoid throwing that winter rye or other cereal grain into them unless you really need to. If you do have bald spots, great opportunity to get in there and throw some down. I also do throw some down later in the season, not so much for what it'll do that year, but I, it'll start to grow a little bit and then it'll come up next spring for weed suppression. I've done other videos on that. You guys can go check those out if you're more interested in how to keep your food plots covered with something that you're growing to keep weed suppressed rather than having to go out there and spray chemicals all the time and kill off your weeds. So the other thing I wanna mention here is you do not have to plant your entire food plot in one of these things. I certainly do not. Now, in northwestern Wisconsin, I plant just exclusively winter rye. I explained why I do that already. But in southeastern Wisconsin, in zone 5, I plant half of the plot in brassicas because they are very viable later in the season when it gets cold. But the deer do not like them as much earlier in the season. So the other half of the plot, I plant in what I call my number 3 on this list of favorite food plots and that is my legumes so that is your beans and your peas so i will plant a forage soybean that is a soybean that is more focused on leaf production than bean production and then i will also mix in a winter pea with that now i plant those beans at 50 pounds per acre and those peas at 100 pounds per acre so that's a total of 150 pounds per acre I will also plant 40 pounds of oats or whatever cereal grain is cheaper here to act as a nurse crop. So what those oats do is they shoot up first, like I talked about the cereal grain mixed with the brassicas, those cereal grains are going to shoot up first, but they're only planted at 40 pounds per acre. When I plant winter rye, if I'm going to layer it, I plant it at 100 pounds per acre. But if I'm going to just plant one time, I'm going to plant it at 200 pounds per acre. And that's to hold up to that browse pressure. Layering it is, of course, planting every two weeks. And you might plant do that three times for a total of 300 pounds per acre. I like to start off with 200. And if I have to add 100 later, I will. But sometimes that 200 all at once is enough. And if you're getting that browse pressure to keep it clipped down, you'll be good to go. It won't get mature on you and you won't have to worry about any of that. But back to the legumes, so we want that nurse crop in there so that when the deer come through, they hopefully nip off the tops of those oats that have sprung up and not the beans and peas because when they're very young, the deer can just nip them off and they'll kill them rather than let them get big and leafed out. Now, the advantage here is that those peas will then grow up because they're a vine up those bean plants, up those oats if they got going, and you're going to really fill in your food plot vertically with tonnage so you're going to have a lot of tonnage of food if you can get these growing and they are very attractive in the beginning earlier season those peas are very sweet they really bring the deer in they absolutely love those earlier in the season but as it gets colder out that side of the plot is going to deteriorate but that's about the time that that other side of the plot that has brassicas in it is going to start to become more viable because it got colder they get sweeter, the deer like the taste of them better as it gets colder, and you will have a food plot that keeps deer coming to it throughout the entire hunting season. Now, fourth on my list is clover food plots, and this includes your chicory and your alfalfa as well. Now, 
if I was further south, so we're talking zone six on south, and for those of you who don't know where that is, the state of Ohio is almost entirely zone six. So we're talking across to Illinois, everything on south of there. If you're in that area, I would probably have clover number two on this list, not number four. But for anybody in zone five on north, that's southern Wisconsin on north, I would put clover number four on the list just because it is not as viable after it gets cold outside as some of these other things. Now, all plants are going to start to deteriorate once you hit that first frost date. The difference is clover, in my experience, has been is less desirable to the deer herd faster when it gets cold out. So that winter rye, that's going to keep growing two to four weeks after everything else in the woods is gray and dead and lifeless. And then it actually greens back up two to four weeks before spring green up as well. So if you are in that far north, zone three, zone four, around the Great Lakes snow belt from Duluth to Buffalo, that is a great thing to get your deer through those rough winters up there. You won't have as much winter kill on your herd if you can shorten the winter for them by one to two months by having winter rye food plots up there. Again, that's why I plant one of the many reasons why I plant winter rye up there. But for clover and such, that will deteriorate a lot faster. Those brassicas will still be booming. That winter rye will still be booming. Those peas and those beans, they will deteriorate as well, but because they have a thicker stem and there's more tonnage to them, even after they dry out, they will have a lot more to offer to your deer herd than that clover that really just shrivels up and shrinks once it gets cold. So I completely try to avoid clover. Like I said, zone five on north. My neighbors in southeastern Wisconsin, they have clover food plots. The deer absolutely love those clover food plots all summer long. But as soon as it starts to get cold outside, guess where the deer herd comes to my bean, pea, and brassica food plot. So that's just perfect example of why we should avoid those. Now, I know some of you will be down in the comments that you've been doing clover food plots in Wisconsin for years and the deer absolutely love them. I'm not saying they don't work. I'm just saying these other things work better. And then just to give you guys some examples of what these frost dates are. So in Wisconsin, our bow opener is the middle of September, but in zone three, the first frost date is the second week of September. So in zone three, you're already getting frost before the season even opens. Now in zone four, the first frost date for this year is late September to early October. So again, you're barely into the bow season and you're already getting frost. In zone five, the first frost date's the second or third week of October. So we haven't even gotten to the rut yet and we've already hit our first frost date. And like I said, those clover food plots are already steeply going downhill and we're barely into the season. So we really wanna make sure when we're in these Northern zones, like five on up, that we're planting something that's a lot more cold tolerant than the clover is. Now there are clover varieties that are more cold tolerant. So if you have your heart set on planting clover, by all means, you can do it in Wisconsin. I'm not saying you can't, but make sure you're going to pick one of those more cold tolerant varieties of clover if you want it to last as long as possible into the season. Now, maybe you even do plant half of your plot in clover and you plant the other half in brassicas so that you do have that attraction later into the season with another crop. That's always possible too. And then the other thing is you can mix a cereal grain in with clover too. So a lot of guys when that clover starts to deteriorate, they will have put winter rye in it to get that winter rye coming up to kind of take over that downhill slide of the clover and catch the uphill slide of that winter rye grain. Now, I always just ask why you wouldn't just put the winter rye plot in in the first place and why you even messed around with clover. And the answer I always get is one of the biggest misconceptions I still continue to hear in this community, and that is we have to get the deer used to coming in. Now, the deer do not need to be coming to your food plot all summer in order to get them used to coming in in the fall. That's just not a thing. The deer, when they move in a 24-hour period, the majority of that movement happens after dark, and that's when they go out and they explore if you have a fall focused food plot that had nothing in it but dirt all summer long, they're going to find that at night. You will see that the first time you get deer on a camera on a food plot, that it'll be at night, they'll find it. And then all of a sudden, maybe a day or two or three later, you'll start having daytime pictures of them on there. As long as the cover and the bedding areas near there are 
viable for them but you'll actually start seeing that you shifted their entire movement and that's also the time that your neighbor who is maybe seeing them during the day on their clover food plot is going to stop seeing them on their clover food plot during the day because they're now on your food plot so you by no means need to get them used to coming in they will find it they will always find that best food source in their area and they are going to be on your food source before dark if you have the best one in the area and if you follow these directions that's how you're going to do it now let's get into that number five food plot as promised so the fifth one here that needs to be mentioned is a corn food plot now i do not recommend putting in a corn food plot unless you have acres and acres of these other four types of food plots because you need a lot of corn if it's going to be your only food source so if i were to only put in like a quarter acre of corn in the big woods up north it's going to be just leveled before we get anywhere near into the season so it's just not viable enough unless you have something else that has a lot more tonnage per acre like a cereal grain food plot like a clover food plot like a brassica like a legume food plot so i would definitely stay away from doing a corn food plot if you're not putting in just acres and acres of food plots and managing hundreds of acres of land now I have put in corn before, but I put it in as a quick screen on the side of a new food plot before I could get switchgrass growing there because switchgrass takes a couple years to get established. So I planted a few rows of corn on the very edge of a food plot just to have that visual screen there. So it can be used for that. It does add a little bit of diversity to the food plot. That way you have that extra type of food in there. Now the problem I had was the raccoons found that corn and they came and they climbed up the stalks and just tumbled over backwards snapping off my stalks which was then destroying the screen I wanted there. So I went out there with a machete and just hacked off all the cobs off to the ground so that they could eat them. The deer, I don't even know if the deer touched the corn because they were too busy being on the actual food plot with the beans, the peas, the brassicas in it. But that did act as a one year screen for me there until I could get that switchgrass established. That switchgrass has since been established for a couple years now in that area. I don't plant corn over there anymore, but it is a use for that fifth type of food plot. And again, if you are managing hundreds of acres here, you can put corn in as another attraction on your property, as more diversity of food on your property. The more different types of food you have on your property, the more attractiveness it will have because at any given time of the year, one of those things will be more attractive than the other. So we want to keep the deer coming in during the season. They don't need to get used to the property in the summer, but throughout the entire hunting season, as it gets colder and we head into winter, we want to make sure they keep coming for something that is attractive during that time of year. If you feel like you got some value out of this video go ahead hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and if you enjoyed this video youtube thinks you're going to enjoy this one otherwise go check out this one and i'll catch you guys on the next one